Welcome back to CivilNet. I'm your host, Patrick Elliott. I'm uh, delighted to be joined today by Mrs. Mary Papazian, who is um, the uh, co-founder of Azov, the Armenian Society of Fellows. Uh, Mary, thank you for joining us today. Well, it's wonderful to be here, Patrick. Thank you for having me. We have a lot to cover, actually, today. I mean, I think that you're, you guys are a little bit, uh, you're, you're doing quite a bit, and so I'm going to try to keep it as concise as possible, but uh, let's dive in. Um, so first and foremost, why would you say that it's important to gather um, Armenian scholars and researchers? Why is it, a, why is it a, such a pressing task, especially given Armenia's current geopolitical situation? Well, let's start with that, that Armenia is at a point in its history where um, it can either grow and thrive or it can find itself vulnerable to the pressures that surround it. One of the real strengths for Armenia is that um, it also has a global diaspora. I'm part of that global diaspora. I grew up in it, and um, yet I've been coming to Armenia since 1974. That's when I made my first trip. Uh, much has happened in those years, and one of the things that's happened is that, of course, we have developed expertise within Armenia, but certainly a great deal of expertise across the globe. Um, we need to all work together. We need to be pulling in the same direction. We need to make sure that the level of expertise is high in Armenia so that Armenia can compete on a global level, and that's, that's our goal. And um, you know, there's a great deal of work uh, underway. How do you see um, the evolution of Armenia diaspora relations? Are they currently satisfactory? What are some room for improvement? And where do you see the future trajectory? Because we can't do this without uh, you know synergy between the two. Well, as I said, we're a global nation. Yeah. We have a heart here in Armenia of about three million people. We are always generous. We say it's about three million. I think it is. It's getting closer. Um, but we have a global uh, diaspora of another seven million, eight million. So that's about 11 million together. Uh, look, Armenia diaspora relations are always a work in progress. Uh, this is part of just the cultural differences. Um, there are layer upon layer of cultural experiences and differences. Um, but at the end of the day, we should all have a shared interest, which is not just the survival of the Armenian nation um, and the Armenian identity, but, but it's thriving. That um, without the, um, a healthy Armenia, the diaspora will fade away over time. We've seen that happen historically. But without a vibrant diaspora engaged in Armenia, Armenia will not uh, reach its potential either. So we're codependent, and I think we're working that out. I know that there are efforts on both sides. I think neither side is entirely satisfied, but we have examples. And I think the work of the Armenian Society of Fellows is one such example, where we're coming together um, to, de to develop solutions together. It's not one side telling the other what to do. It's not one side um, criticizing the other. It's really both, both the um, diaspora and, and the core, the Republic of Armenia, working together, recognizing a shared interest. Uh, much work to do, many bumps along the road, but um, I'm, I'm optimistic that we'll get there. I'm glad you mentioned shared interest. Let's, uh, what do you see Armenia's development trajectory? What do you think we should be striving toward? Well, I think it's multi-layered. Um, I'm an educator. I spent my entire career in higher education as a faculty member, as an academic administrator and as president of two universities. So I think a lot about the way higher education institutions are organized, whether they're set up so that um, learning can really develop, so cutting edge research can happen. But I also think my mother was an educator at the, the high school level, so I'm very, you know, I sort of grew up looking at that pipeline from K through 12. I think one of our interests has to be really developing a robust, healthy, a modern uh, 21st century educational system for Armenia. We have a long way to go. We have a long way to go at the K through 12 level. We have a long way to go at the higher education level, but we have signs of success. There are sprouts there. We just have to help them flourish. Um, so that's one. You can't have a, a strong uh, state with, with a healthy security environment, and security has to be at the core of, of Armenia's future um, without a healthy educational institution. And our economic future depends on it. So I think it's really the three. I think it's education, I think it's economic development and human development, and then I think it's security. Yeah, so living here for three years, I mean, you can see how many of the problems that we have here just really stem from, from education in general. It's not that people are bad people or they don't have the capacity for, for growth, but even down to, you know, just the, the, the way the environment is treated, the, the, the pollution, the, the littering, the smoking, the issues with health, you know. 
um, and without a doubt security. One thing that a lot of uh, Western diplomats uh, have mentioned is that they would like to expand cooperation with Armenia. The problem is that a lot of our military officers or anyone who's within the security sphere, the, the lack of English language is an issue. You don't have enough people who are able to communicate with the outside world. Um, so from the education side of things, something I've been advocating for a really long time is that, that English should be a standard language from the moment an Armenian child begins school. Um, is this something that you guys are also working towards or something, is this uh, an opinion of, that you share with me or disagree with entirely? Well, I would say this, that um, Armenians have, it's a very small nation, uh, but we have to compete on the world stage. The world stage and the dominant language, um, and this is not a value judgment, it's the reality, um, the dominant language is English. And with Armenia's interest in advancing in science and technology, um, really becoming known in the high tech space, uh, the language of technology and science is English. So without a doubt, we need to be able to compete in that level. I think, you know, I look at small states around the globe and, you know, you can look at several in Europe. Uh, I, I use the example of Switzerland. There's no child that grows up in Switzerland that doesn't know Swiss, Swiss German and German, doesn't know French. I mean, they're both uh, languages of the country, but also is fluent in English and probably Italian and probably something else as well. There's no reason Armenians, um, who have always been very cosmopolitan, have always been very committed to learning. I mean, th this is, you know, this is part of our history. Um, and certainly English needs to be a part of it. It's not the only language. Um, certainly Armenian needs to be at the core. Um, so we want to maintain and develop and strengthen the Armenian language because so much of our history is characterized within, within our language. That's important. But it's not, a, it's not a only this or, it's a both and. So yes, Armenian, yes, English, because it's the international language in the areas that Armenian wants to compete. And yes, there are other languages as well. We have a strong component of Russian speakers, which is also very good. We have French speakers. I would love to see Armenians learn um, some of the Asian language, especially Chinese, for example. So we need to become fluent in multiple languages so that we Arabic can- Arabic speakers. Arabic speakers, absolutely. Uh, Turkish speakers as well. I mean, with this, these, are, these are important. We need to s encourage, I would say, trilingualism within Armenia. Um, I would go with Armenian, English, and another language. And let's have a combination of multiple other languages so that we are known as a multifaceted, multi-fluent uh, society who can work with anyone in the world. And be honest, is this something that the, the uh, education ministry has been open to? Are they implementing this without telling us? Uh, is this uh, something that's being worked on? You know, I haven't had that conversation with the Minister of, of Education, so I can't answer or speak for her. Um, but I will say that, that certainly there's um, an interest in, in many spaces, and I think we can see it in the success of um, the American University of Armenia, for example, which has uh, a very robust student population and desire and, of course, teaches uh, teaches its, its language in English. The, um, of course, the French university, and so the development of French, the Slavonic university with Russian. So we're seeing multilingual universities across the country, and I think that's a good sign. Tell us, um, in light of Armenia's changes, how can Armenia attract and keep top scientific talent uh, in the country? We do have this new uh, law, well, it's at this point it's a year or two old, where the government will subsidize the salary of, uh, of, uh, of an expert that comes to the country. Do you see more of these kinds of reforms and, and what are some of the ways that Armenia can do better? Yeah, I think these are very good moves. Um, I think there are a couple of examples. Uh, you've mentioned the one. There's, there's also some of the work that FAST is doing, the Foundation for Armenian Science and Technology, where it, through its advanced grants, where it's bringing teams, an expert scientist from, from somewhere else in Europe, United States, uh, uh, working with a team of young scientists here in Armenia, and so that's growing the young scientists in Armenia. But I'll speak here specifically about the Armenian Society of Fellows. Um, we're bringing, uh, for our conference, this is our third conference. The first one was in, in Venice at the monastery, San Lazaro, but last year we were in Dilijan. Uh, this year we're here, and we're here at the Madanataran, and we're bringing scientists and scholars uh, across the disciplines from around the world. And the idea is to work in partnership with um, scientists and leaders here in Armenia 
to ensure again that we're bringing the expertise. You can't bring a, one person by themselves and expect, particularly in science, which is often lab-based. You need to have teams of people um, so that they can learn from each other, support each other. Um, and, and I think when we do that, and we have some plans um, to, to build a uh, center, for example, of uh, intelligent computing uh, in partnership with Yerevan State University. That's in process, and the idea is to bring expert scientists generally younger scientists who can grow and, and grow with Armenia. Uh, and finally, Mary, what, uh, what message do you have for the next generation of Armenian scientists, scholars, and researchers? Well, I would say first have hope. We're very excited about, for example, the energy behind the ASOF conference. We're doing a public meeting at Yerevan State on Saturday. We're doing a, another public meeting at AUA on Sunday. So an opportunity to share some of the work with the broader Armenian population. And I would hope that, um, you know, one of the challenges, I'll be frank, one of the challenges we have is that the pipeline is broken. We don't have the students in the sciences at the young age. This is where we have to really work at the K through 12 level. Um, we also don't have the teachers, so we have to think differently about how we prepare early grade teachers so they have content knowledge. We have a disconnect between the National Academy of Sciences, for example, where a lot of research happens, and the university, so we have to integrate those differently. And I think there's, as I said, there's some really good people here in Armenia working on this. There's been a lot of receptivity um, through the government, through the science committee, as well as through, through um, Gatouj, which is another collection of scientists here in Armenia, working in partnership with scientists from across, across the country. And we're now a very small world. We can connect virtually anytime. We've learned that very much. And I would encourage young scientists to to first believe it's possible to have a career in science here in Armenia. That there are partners, there are people who are ready to work with you and to develop your expertise so that you're publishing at a, at a global um, world-class level. And uh, you will help change Armenia for the better. It's a good place to stop. Thanks again, Mary Papazian. It's uh, good to have you here. Thanks, Patrick. It's a pleasure to be here. And thanks again for watching CivilNet.